Okay, when I left Australia, I realized I had to use this footage to simulate rolling shutter, but I'm not good enough in After Effects. So I got my friend Henry to meet me oh. at Patreon headquarters, and we're gonna do it, right? Yep. What'd you do? Well, Destin, I took your high-speed footage, and I simulated what rolling shutter looks like. This is actually a simulated image, not not a real image of rolling shutter. Uh, and the way this works is that I take the original, the original image, uh, the original video, which just looks like it, the high speed, so it, it doesn't have any rolling shutter effect at all. I slow it down by a factor of 10, and then I use those frames uh, and the top line of pixels of this image. So it's an additive image. It's an additive image. The top line, it's, a, it's an image over time. This is not at all at a single time. The top line of pixels is from one frame. And the next line of pixels down is the next frame of that video. The next line of pixels down is the next frame. And you just keep going down, so, you know, about a thousand pixels of of height is a thousand different frames over time and that is how you that is how you make a simulation of rolling shutter because that's actually how rolling shutter happens in the real world I know the answer to this I just want to hear Henry's explanation <laughs> so when I took the the iPhone right right and I was I was shooting it like this I got one look and then when I turned it vertically I got yeah. another look you want to see what happens let me go back to this other Australia one because I think it's more obvious here um, so this is the Australia one you can see that the um, that all of these are kind of the shutter, or the sorry, the the blades are bent backwards because of the way that the rotation happens. The, the fact that the shutter is rolling down. Right. But let me just pretend pretend that the shutter didn't roll this way, but it rolled to the side. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into this gradient composition. You're a wizard. Um, and I'm gonna, so this is this is what's telling the time. You know, this is saying this is early and this is late in time. So it's saying this is you know, basically this is this is the thing that's telling the computer how to do the rolling shutter. Right. Saying this line of pixels should be, you know, offset by a certain amount of time and this should be offset by a different amount of time. Uh, so let's let's just rotate that um, 90 degrees. Right, so now it's horizontal. Mm -hmm. And now let's go back. So that's in a representation of a temporal sample. Yeah, this is, temporal this, sample. this is basically saying how we're going to sample temporally to create the rolling shutter. Got it. Um, one interesting thing, I'm just going to say here, this, may, this will probably get cut out, but one interesting thing is that you have to do this in a uh, 16 bit or greater image because an 8 bit image only has 255 color values, right. brightness values, brightness values, and you have more than 255 pixels from the top to the bottom of your image or side to side. So you actually have to have to work in a color space that has more bit depth. So 16 bits is what After Effects can use. It's defaults to 8 bits, but using 16 allows us to do this. You couldn't you get weird effects if you uh, banding effects if you don't do 16 bits. So now I'm going to go back to this same picture and we'll wait for it to calculate. It has to go through all these thousands of frames to build this image slice by slice. Um, so so, so you're, let's hold, let's hold the camera on there. You're building one frame right now. One frame right now from thousands of other frames. Each one's, one slice of each other frame is being added up here and the computer's just adding them. Oh wow. That's not very exciting. Let's, let's try to go forward a little bit here and see if we can get something more exciting out of that. It's like there you get some kind of interesting stuff. Oh wow! This is what happens when you turn this one the other, the other direction. Um, so instead of rolling shutter going down, down the screen, going we're going left to right. Hey, look at that mustache there. Mustache. And I can change. What I can do is I can change. Um, if I go into here, I can change the settings on the rolling shutter part of it. Um, so it's going to think for a while because it has to do a lot of thinking. Um, but I can say okay. Let's let's have this take longer to go across there instead of um, taking you know I don't know what it is but instead of taking say twenty milliseconds let's take forty milliseconds to go across mm -hmm. um, instead of gives the propeller more time to rotate rotate farther and if I increase that enough um, you'll start to see separation separation you start to see more parts because basically the propeller has gone through more rotations as you go across these. So there you go. This is this is what happens. This is why you see these weird separated ones when you have it your phone say um, vertical. I think. Yep. You, when you have the iPhone, you get these weird. So triple like triple that. that rate that you have this right there. Here. Yeah, I go to six hundred. Yeah. So we're gonna see a lot of those ones, and that's gonna look like like what you always see. That's what I see out the the windscreen. Yeah. The windscreen. Look at that. That's what it looks like when you have your phone. And if I put up to full quality, you can make a better quality. Oh man, yeah, that's exactly what you see out the windscreen, and also, also you'll see it aliasing across. Yeah, so, so it's like it slides over, like this pa pattern will slide over slightly. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's because it's jumping between frames like this. 
you're jumping, you know, over like almost a full propeller rotation. It's a so you're doing two things. You're you're creating rolling shutter artifacts like that, and you're aliasing, which means these yeah. things start moving across. So here, if you want to zoom in on that, like this is this is like more of the kind of thing that an iPhone sees because what's happening is the propeller is turning more times in the time it takes to scan across. Got the it. Rolling shutter. So the more times the propeller rotates in the time it takes the rolling shutter to move across the frame, the more of these separate artifacts you're going to get. My guess is that each one of these represents one of the blades going through. And since this uh, plane had, what, two, two, two blades in the propeller? Yep. So this two of these counts for one full rotation, and there's two more. And then there's, there's the two blades attached to the... Because you're always going to see two attached to the, to the propeller. And then there's two more, and then there's another one, and there's a piece of it. Oh, this this is this is an artifact of running out of frames to build. So you can see right. actually here we we used so many frames to build this that now there's actually that's the end of the video. The video is right there, so it just uses that single frame for the rest of it. So what we should see is another one here and then another little sliver there. Gotcha. Um, to see the full you know set. I want to see like your actual reaction. To okay, this. so what 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 is this? Oh, dude. Of the what rolling shutter looks like over time. Okay, so here's a question. Did you look at the, f the the time between frames and then actually figure out what the rolling shutter time is on the iPhone? No, I haven't. I haven't compared this directly to the iPhone. It's this this frame rate is actually much. You can see that the propeller is just slowly spinning around here. So this is still kind of a high speed version. If you, the iPhone version, it would judder back and forth, and you'd kind of because the iPhone <coughs> is is much slower. So what I think is interesting is you've got this interaction of a. You know, it's a it's a rotational motion, so you've got a sinusoidal interaction, right, mm -hmm. temporally, but you're you're also wiping down from the top to the bottom. Right. So you've got this linear interaction with the sinusoidal function, and I think I don't know what it reminds me of an arc tangent graph. It it does, and I think it's related. I think there's you know, there's a family of some sort of we should look this up. It's a f some sort of family of trigonometric curves of some sort. Um, that that you get you get when you transform it this way. Constantly. You know what I just realized? Yeah. If you knew the the rate of the rolling shutter the sample rate of that shutter, and you counted the number of free propeller segments on one side, you could you get... The, the RPMs of the propeller, more or less, you without could, knowing your high-speed camera. Yeah. Exactly. You could get ballpark. Yeah. You, could, you know, yeah, you, you would get iPhone, within a band. With your iPhone, if you knew the, the rolling shutter rate, you could pretty much reasonably get, you know, order of magnitude to the speed of the propeller. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Boom. What, was, what do you call the simulation? I don't know. The, the rice shutter. rotation simulation? It's just simulated rolling shutter. It's, you know, you time warp using a gradient map. That's, that's awesome. That's what it is in After Effects. It's, it's like stupidly simple effect in terms of like the things you have to put into it, but it's just really processor intensive and you have to set it up properly. It's not stupidly simple. Henry is a genius. It's just, the thing is, when I say stupidly simple, it's like it's two effects and After Effects combined in a, in a clever way. Okay, so here's the deal. I appreciate what Henry has done for me here on this footage. If you appreciate that as well, we met here at Patreon headquarters. Please consider supporting Minute Physics and Minute Earth yep. on Patreon, correct? Yes, indeed. Yeah, so uh, Henry does stuff like this for his videos all the time, and he supports two channels. And so if you would like to support Awesome Science on the Internet, please consider going to patreon.com slash Minute Physics and patreon.com slash Minute Earth, correct? Yep. That's it. Smarter Every Day is also on Patreon, so check that out as well. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Yeah, you remembered this. <laughs>